Okay, good morning everyone. What is up and welcome back to another vlog. Another exciting week because it's my second week of residency and although it's still orientation, I don't know, there's fun things planned this week and I'm so excited to take you along and show you the cool things that we get to do. I know we're doing some simulation type stuff this week, some OR surgical training skills and labor and delivery protocols, suturing, a lot of fun things happening this week and then the chief resident is graduating from the program and so we get to celebrate that as well. Really, really, really exciting. If you have not watched last week's vlog, that was my first week of residency. Judging by the feedback I received, the comments, you guys are so awesome and so lovely. It seems like you really like that video and you can tell how happy I am. I feel so happy. I feel obviously like this is where I'm supposed to be in life and it's just so feels good um and yeah super exciting so if you haven't seen that check it out i don't know which corner it's in but i'll put the card up there but yeah that's what's going on today we have like some informational type stuff happening this morning and then i'm gonna practice suturing with my co-interns after or during lunch and then i think we have we're free for the rest of the day to work on modules and studying and stuff like that because i'm starting to study for complex level three Ugh. That is my third set of boards, if you guys didn't know. Um, DOs, I'm a DO, so that is so weird to say instead of saying a DO student. I still like cannot get used to it. We did a simulation the other day and the doctor was like, uh, introduce yourself to your patient. And it was like a fake like sim thing. And I was like, I have to say doctor, like that is so weird. <laughs> I don't know, I'm like still not there yet. Anyways, I'm a DO and normally we take MD and DO boards, the like USMLE and Comlex, that's like, USMLE is uh, MD, Comlex is DO. For the first two b sets of boards, um, I've, I took both, which is what normally like what DOs do, because it's a way for, anyways, it's like it's stupid. But um, so I've taken step one, level one, and then step two, level two. But for level three, um, or the third set of boards, I'm only taking the DO boards. I don't want to do fellowship like that is, I, I don't want to do, I cannot, I don't want to do more training. I just want to start, um, I just want to be a generalist, you know, and be an OBGYN. Since that's the case, just gonna take the one and it doesn't really matter what score I get, I just have to pass. And my program says like, hey, just pass. Like, we don't care, um, just pass. So I just need to pass, but I'm still studying because I actually have to take it. I'm probably gonna take it in like September, maybe the end of September or early October before my birthday, before I turn dirty 30, dear God. Uh, anyway, so that's what's going on. Anyways, I need to run to the hospital now because um, I want to be able to grab something from the cafeteria before we start our day. Um, I'm gonna go. I'll talk to you guys when I get to the hospital. We ended up just having a few short meetings and then I went to a cafe to kill some time and study before my dentist appointment. I had a cavity that needed to be filled and I got a last minute appointment and I am not thrilled. If you guys are wondering how I'm studying for level three, Give me a little bit and then I'll let you know. To be honest, I think that I'm just going to do questions and learn from questions. I am not going to do Anki. I am not going to watch Boards and Beyond or any other resources. I am just going to do questions. I am surprised at how much information is still in my brain. Can I actively recall on the spot like I used to? Absolutely not with like things that aren't ob guide related. But if I have like a question stem and then answers to choose from, it's still in there. Your girl still got it. So that's promising. I spoke way too soon because I'm getting a lot of the questions wrong. So that's more of what I expected. <laughs> so I'm only on, I think, question 15 out of 40 and I needed to take a break because I was just getting wrecked. Love it for me. I'm making a salmon patty from Costco with like a stir fry vegetable from Costco. And then I have half of my brown rice also from costco and then half of an avocado also from costco costco needs to sponsor me i think this is dinner this is new look at this guys uh excuse me yeah step three level three there are free response sections not bad. Not good, but not bad. Sometimes I can feel it coming Like a moving tide mm, yeah. I pack my things and start running
I'm sorry it's so dark, I cannot. The ISO is already at 800, F stops at 4.0, that's as low as it goes. I could crank it up to like a thousand. 1250 but we're gonna get grainy here yoga felt so nice i love inversions i used to be a gymnast and so being upside down is actually really comfortable for me i don't know i enjoy it i enjoy being upside down uh yeah so i love inversions and so i ended off my practice tonight with some inversion practice and it just feels so good also you guys if you didn't know about the merch that we have we have the new collections the two new ones metamorphosis and all that good stuff um this one i freaking love this design you guys ah so i bought obviously i had bought this one a, a while ago when it first launched um, for my laptop and then my work laptop i got a bigger sticker because you can order bigger sizes and i put it on my work laptop so now i have identified pieces um like with my stuff so it doesn't get lost this morning we had some additional time to work on our suturing again this is the second degree perineal laceration repair working again on the sponge before we move up to a better model later this week people in the hospital or settings whatever they likely have a bunch of expired suture stuff they collect all of this stuff and ask for it med students like ask like I'm telling you like I wasn't just a med student yesterday, but please ask because this is how you get better because you're gonna practice 30 years or whenever you're gonna go on your surgical rotation, you need to know and master, or it would be really impressive if you mastered these things before getting there on any surgical rotation, um, even like EM, but um, yeah, gen surge, ob ortho, whatever surgical rotation you go on, know your knots double-handed left and right and single-handed knots. I mastered these before going on to any surgical rotation. It's impressive, you know, to like to see an attending or resident to see you actually being confident with knot tying. It's great. And you should be able to like switch from like right to left hand, single to double, double to single, left, right, whatever. You should be able to do that. So I want to show you. I'm not gonna teach you how to do it because there are videos. I'll try and link the ones that I remember down below. So what I'm saying is that you should be able to go from like a double on the right. So they're like, okay, just do double on the right. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do double on the right. And then they're like, do a double on the left. So I can just switch over to a double on the left. These aren't laying completely flat because I'm not like worried about that right now. And then they're like, do a single on the right. Then you just go into a single. And then you do a, a single on the left. You know what I'm saying, guys? So you should be able to like switch around and without even like thinking and then be able to complete knots. You know what I'm saying? Because there's going to be circumstances where you kind of have to throw a single or you have to throw a double because say, for example, you're going way down into the abdomen. You usually just do a single and you push it down. Um, because it's kind of blind when you push and follow the knot down to the bottom. Whereas say for like a double handed knot, say you're coming to the end of this string and you need to knot it. Um, you can do a double much easier with less string than you can like doing a single. I don't know, just get comfortable with doing single handed on the left and right, double handed on the left and right. And then in front of your attending or resident or whoever is operating with you, always throw the double knots first out of etiquette and kind of like respect, I guess, to show that, hey, I know how to do a double handed knot. And then if they ask you like, can you do a single, then do the single. Or after they've seen you do the double, maybe you can be like, hey, do you mind if I throw a single uh, handed knot instead of a double? Because yeah, there's been times where I've been in the OR with like a, a surgeon and I've done a single handed knot for the first time in front of them and they're like, can you please do a double-handed knot? Cause I wanna make sure you can do that first before you do single-handed. I know not all of you are going into OBGYN or are as excited to learn about it as I am, like the material, but I know that we can all appreciate how we came into this world, right? Because it's it takes a lot of coordination with baby and mom, anatomy, physiology, all of these things to work together to allow us to actually enter the world. So I want to just briefly tell you about shoulder dystocia and the, the maneuvers to actually get baby out if this occurs. Um, I will be very vague and brief just so I don't waste your time. Uh, I just find it really fascinating. So shoulder dystocia is when baby's shoulders get stuck um, while trying to come out of the 
body. And that's just like very layman's terms about it. But there's an issue with this, right? Because if baby's stuck and cannot come out, then they're at risk for like hypoxic injury because their cord is still connected to mom and they're not getting enough oxygen, all these different things. And you basically have a limited amount of time to actually get baby out. And there's been maneuvers that have been discovered and implemented that you have to do in a stepwise fashion to try and get baby out. You have about four to five minutes before baby has like can have severe hypoxic injury. There's like multiple maneuvers, but um, I'll tell you about a few. So the first one that you do is McRoberts maneuver, and then you can add super pubic pressure with that. So McRoberts, you have mom flexes her legs up more, um, and then abducts to abducts like the legs, and you don't do it too much because you can cause other injury to mom. So doing McRoberts allows the diameter of the pelvis to open up a little bit more. Um, and then the super pubic pressure also helps, with, I think with the angle of like, like baby and stuff, I don't know. You move on to other procedures or maneuvers. Sorry, I'm also like learning about this at the same time. Reuben maneuver, and I think this one is Reuben two. There's like a one and two, but the two is when you actually stick your fingers inside the vagina and you access the most accessible shoulder and you are on the posterior side side of the shoulder and you rotate baby to um, like towards their chest so we decrease the um, diameter of the shoulders and hopefully get out baby like that there's another one called the woods screw maneuver and this one is similar to the Reuben except you are accessing the posterior shoulder on the anterior side of it and then the anterior shoulder you're on the posterior side and you are like doing like a a little like corkscrew. The caveat to that is that you have to have enough space to actually get both hands into the vagina. So sometimes you might have to do an episiotomy, which is cutting um, like the introitus, like the opening to make more space for both of your hands. There's also posterior arm delivery. Yeah, so you reach in to try and access the posterior arm. You can get into like the antecubital fossa of baby, the forearm hopefully, or maybe you can access the hand and you bring the arm across the chest and pull it out so baby can come out that way. There's also like a Gaskin maneuver. If you can't resolve this within three minutes, then obviously you're approaching that four to five minute mark, right? Um, so there are two kind of like last ditch efforts to help with delivery. Um, so there's the abdominal rescue, which this one's pretty intense, where um, a doc will come in from the top and make an incision in the abdomen and get into the lower uterine segment and then um, push the shoulder, um, you know, rotate it so the baby can come out while there's another physician delivering baby uh, vaginally. So there's that. Or there's a Zavanelli maneuver where the physician you know, they've ton, done all of these maneuvers and they cannot get baby out. So they actually put the head back in the vagina and then they go and do a C-section. So um, I guess the issues with those two last stitch efforts is that they obviously are done when you've already done all of the maneuvers, you've spent a lot of time already. And so the time is, is ticking um, before it's too late. Doesn't that blow your mind? It, it blows my mind. It's like amazing that, that you just don't think about like what happens if baby gets stuck. Thank God I'm in this field because it's the freaking best. I don't care what anyone says, ob is the best. This morning we had our neonatal resuscitation course and it was actually pretty intense. We learned how to intubate little babies and we actually were put in scenarios with a very realistic simulation baby and it was actually very intense. Was not expecting it, but good to know. And then we learned how to use these air filter things in case we want to use them in the OR. And then we had to get signed off for knowing how to put in a Foley. Luckily, we've all done this plenty of times in real life in the OR, but we just got to get signed off. And so here I am putting a Foley in and then you got to fill up the balloon with water so it doesn't fall out. And then you check to make sure that it's secure and then you can deflate it when you're all done. So that is what we did, and yeah, it was pretty fun. Good morning, everyone. What is up? Happy Thursday. Um, today is going to be a really exciting day, but kind of long. This morning, we have to do a sim suture type workshop thing, but we're actually showing our attendings our second degree lab repairs that we've been practicing so diligently. Then we'll have an OB sim lab in the afternoon with all of the residents, um, and then in the evening, we are going to dinner with all of the like residency, I think, for 
the graduation of the chief resident. So it'll be an exciting day. I have to get dressed and run out the door. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Today's going to be a great day and it's Thursday. So we're basically done um, with our second week and this weekend's going to be exciting. I don't know. I'm excited. Let's do the thing. Hooray, we moved up from our sponges and we got these models for our perineal laceration repairs. Before that, we started practicing how to inject the lidocaine and where to inject it uh, in the perineum before you start doing repairs. And you just have to make sure that you pull back before injecting the lidocaine to make sure you're not in a vessel. So here I am just doing it in the multiple points that you can do before you start your repair. And then we had our OB simulation lab with all of the other residents. This is a way more realistic model. You can see the muscles there. Those are the ones that you are actually repairing during the whole repair process. This was a cervix check type thing. And then here we are doing a little simulation delivery. And that is my um, co-resident, that is Dr. Ra. She actually has her own TikTok. I will link it down below. Um, she's amazing and the best teacher ever. And I'm so happy to be working with her again. And then this is us practicing an endometrial biopsy with this Pipel. Um, pretty cool, we used iodine just to make sure that we were doing it right. And then here we are inserting a balloon to help ripen the cervix when we're trying to get labor moving along and you fill it up with saline. Here I am practicing with uh, Dr. Ra again. She is such a great teacher, but yeah, just learning how to do that. Like you did with their arrow. Good, and once it's in the right place, you turn on 10 plates. Okay, we are in red for the bleeding uterus. Red for the bleeding uterus. Okay. I love that. Red to the fungus. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't come out. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And then you take your hand out and you take this one off. Wherever you want to see it.